Everybody, it's Tyler here at the Texas Cup, checking with team number 2687, Team Apprentice, which is the sophomore JV team of 2468. Uh, we're going to be going through uh, this robot here, really cool looking one that we have, of course, new Spindex here uh, coming up. Uh, and some things we're going to be uh, showing off as well, too. Of course, their shooter and their climber, all that and more. And joining me today from this team, I have uh, Alex, Nastasia, Spencer, Ben, and Oppenoff. And I can't wait to talk more about this team. You guys might have heard a lot about 2468, but I'm telling you, Team Apprentice here sometimes beats 2468. So something you got to pay attention to all here on Behind the Bumpers. Giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting fun so we can continue to make content for you. Stryker makes some of the most revolutionary medical equipment and is a big supporter of FIRST and its participants. If you are looking for an internship or a career that supports you being in FIRST, check out careers.stryker.com to learn more. If your team or organization is hosting an off-season event, did you know you can stream it right here on FIRST Updates Now for free? Events that stream on First Updates Now receive an additional 25 to 100% additional viewership because we help you promote your event on a large platform. If you're interested, reach out to us on any of our social platforms, on Discord, or send us an email at admin at firstupdatesnow.com. Let's get your off-season event streaming on First Updates Now. Hurry, dates are booking fast, and we take first come, first serve for all our events. So Alex, we're gonna be starting out with this uh, robot here, brand new 2021 robot uh, for your team. So tell us a little bit more about the uh, intake on it, some of the concepts and the materials used. So one of the big key points of this intake was we wanted to be able to retract it and um, put it back out so that we could stay protected during throughout the entire game. So we have a Neo 550 on an 80, 81 to 1 versus Planetary, so we can pivot um, up and down during the match. And then we have this springed out idler, which helps uh, our intake geometry get uh, balls and we can go full speed over balls. And then we can run it. Um, so it goes pretty well. And then we have these rollers, which are actually the Vex Versa rollers. They are made out of polycarbonate. So I noticed, uh, you know, polycarbonate here, but you guys are going with some pretty thick aluminum for this. I'm assuming yeah. it's uh, in case uh, robots are bumping into you. Yeah, and we shoot um, a triangle shot, so we can just line up against that, and it's pretty good. Yeah, makes a lot of sense in that. Uh, Nastasha is going to be covering the spin dexter, so let's talk a little bit more about some of the concept. Lots of 3D printing uh, on that as well, too, so tell me a little bit more about it. Right, of course. So our spin dexter is driven by a sim motor that drives a small pinion down here, and that then drives a bigger gear that is made out of metal. The original gear was actually a 3D printed one, but due to wear and tear, we later decided to re replace it with a metal aluminum one. Uh, on the inside, we have 3D prints here, and they help by moving along with the bottom as well, so that like this. They help uh, eliminate basically the backspin that occur could occur on the ball, and help it be more frictionless when going to the transfer. Uh, so I noticed there's a little bit of gaps uh, on the 3D printing here. Did you guys have like dividers originally, or was this always an open concept? We did have uh, dividers, but we decided that it worked better without them, So, and this worked in matches as well. Yeah, we're starting to see actually a lot of teams are kind of going that route where they uh, have that openness to it. So I uh, appreciate you speaking about that. Uh, we're going to be going in the shooter next, kind of that kicker into it. Spencer, uh, you're going to be covering that. Uh, curious to hear more about how you get up into the shooter. Uh, and then, of course, more about this uh, pretty beefy flywheel you have as well. Of course. And so we use a little um, little green omni wheel down at the bottom as our transfer. And it can just spins around and feeds the balls up into the shooter. And this big wheel is made out of steel on the outside, but on the inside it's made out of HDPE plastics, make it lighter and easier okay. to spin up. I was going to say, if that's all steel, man, that's, that's pretty impressive to get it sped up in time. So No, it's, it's made out of mostly plastic with some steel. Uh, it's driven by two Neos, uh, it's, and it's also geared for speed on a 54 to 36 uh, gear ratio. And then the hood is driven by a Neo 550 with a nice gear train. And it runs on bearings in these 3D prints right here. So it can uh, move up and we can shoot from multiple places on the field. And we also have these nice tensioners over here in red so that the hood stays in place and doesn't move anywhere. Yeah, and as we see a little bit of movement from the hood happen on there, uh, talk to me a little bit uh, more about this, uh, the compression on the uh, power cell coming in. So how did you gauge exactly what compression you wanted for that? So for the compression, we did, a, uh, we did a little prototyping, but we also had last year's prototyping that determined like, just what compression we needed. And then from there, speed and programming took over and dialed in our controls. 
Well, makes a lot of sense on that. Uh, we're going to keep continuing on into the uh, climber there, which Ben's going to be uh, covering. Uh, so, looks like uh, single stage, it kind of looks like, right on that. So, talk to me a little bit more about uh, that, how it works, and some of the channeling for it as well. Yep, it is a single stage. So, on the outside, we have a two by two rail, and then on the inside, it's a one and a half by one and a half square tube. And this has four bearings on the bottom, four bearings on the top, and they hold it together so that there is minimal play. And we have a winch down here. It has a string, and when we unspool the string, the spring takes over, the constant force spring. And it brings the whole climb up. And then when we want to bring it down, we just spool up the winch, and the string pulls it down. Let's see it actually go up. We'll kind of take a look at that being demonstrated there. Sure. What, was the single stage climber, was that the first thing in your mind for this year when you analyzed the 2021? Yeah, we wanted to keep our climb as simple as possible. Our every bot last year also was a single stage, and that was something we wanted to improve upon. Well, let's wrap up on this robot here. Abhinav, you're going to be talking about some of the code and sensors that are on this uh, robot. So tell us a little bit more of what goes into this. Yeah, so uh, one of the main ways that we work on autonomous and doing all these systems is through uh, the drive encoders. So we have a forward Neo drive base, all of them have encoders, and we use that information to basically figure out where we are. So through dead reckoning and uh, assuming that our paths work the way that we expect, we can generate motion profiles along the paths that we draw out in our path planner and then basically follow those paths uh, using generated motion profiles. So we use PID control in order to get each side to follow the uh, velocities that we specify in the motion profiles. And then we use IMU control to make sure that we have the correct heading. So through those combination of uh, uh, feedback control, then we're able to follow our path pretty accurately and get some pretty good autonomous. Uh, last thing I want to ask you is, uh, we mentioned your JB team, uh, the uh, Appreciate family, we'll call it, has essentially uh, a team for each grade level this year, right? So 9, 10, 11, and 12 on it. How does, uh, you know, how does that fit in? Do you feel like you are part of that family-wise, or is it is it very separate? How do you work together? Yeah, so uh, all of us have been working together. Uh, throughout like the last week, all of us have been working to get all of our robots ready. Uh, I've certainly gotten a lot of help from some of my senior uh, leads. Um, we've also gotten help from even the freshman people. And uh, I mean, all of us working together, that's what one of the most important things that have allowed us to bring four robots to this challenge. Well, Team uh, Apprentice, thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us. Uh, good luck here at the Texas Cup, of course. Uh, I can't wait to see your team in, in the future, so I think you'll be on a different team in future years, right, uh, for you guys. But of course, can't wait to keep following this family as they go through. Good luck uh, here today. We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting this video. Stryker is looking for current and future FIRST alumni to join their internship program and FIRST mentors who are looking for a great career with a company who actually supports their FIRST journey. Go to careers.stryker.com to learn more. You can also directly support FUN by joining FUN Nation. Click the join button and just for a few bucks a month, you unlock special perks and directly support us so we can keep making great content. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out.